it uh, could not be more fitting to begin the day <clears throat> than to focus on one of the most uh, troubled, problematic, challenging of all the Arab countries, uh, both unto itself as well as its neighbors and its peoples, uh, and to the United States and uh, the many friends of Yemen throughout the world. Uh, there are few countries that have more friends than Yemen. Uh, a few uh, countries have more outsiders who um, love Yemen, love the Yemen people. A uh, few countries who have had more visitors who have had a quality stay and uh, empirical educational exposure on the ground uh, where Yemen has stolen a piece of its heart, their heart, and uh, refused to give it back. And uh, that's been quite all right uh, for the people who have fallen in love with Yemen. Uh, there are many people, and, uh, and those of you who have lived and worked there who uh, recognize that none of my comments just now are an exaggeration. And neither is it when people say, well, sort of, what's it closest to? What's it most like? And uh, most people are, are, are drummed into silence with a question like that because they said it is not most like any country. It is unto itself uh, beyond description in comparison with or in contrast uh, to others. Uh, only once have I heard someone say, well, if you had to make up a comparison, it might be geographically only uh, a far example of Morocco. <clears throat> That is to say, it has uh, two coasts, uh, Morocco on the Atlantic and the Mediterranean, and Yemen on the Indian Ocean and the Red Sea. And uh, Morocco has mountains, uh, two different ones, three different ones, lower, middle, upper uh, atlas. And Yemen likewise has uh, not just uh, several mountain ranges, but you can stand on the top of uh, many mountain tops and slowly turn around 360 degrees and see anywhere uh, close to 50 other mountain tops. And there's no road connecting any of the 50. And it has been the uh, traditions for centuries where people have walked to the bottom on a daily basis to get water, firewood, provisions, goods, services, and come back up at the end of the day to sleep and think nothing of it. Uh, I don't think the country has as many as 10 elevators. Maybe the ambassador can um, correct any of my statements here, but, and those elevators would only have been in the last 15 years. So the Yemenis are, are, are accustomed to climbing and, and to exerting themselves. Uh, uh, no one has ever said that the Yemeni people are lazy. Uh, they are amongst the most energetic, uh, hardworking people uh, uh, of the planet. Uh, they have been known since uh, biblical times as the uh, hewers of wood and the barrows of, of water. Uh, they have immigrated just about to every place under the sun. In fact, some think uh, a little beyond that, if there is a man, a woman in the moon, it's a Yemeni uh, there. Uh, those who are into labor and migration studies in uh, California uh, know that 4,000 Yemenis were with uh, the late Cesar Chavez and one little pocket of California as workers for Cesar Chavez. Those who are from Michigan um, will know I'm not making it up. When I went to the office of the United Auto Workers Union outside of the Ford Motor uh, Plant once, and I was introduced to the four officers of the United Auto Workers Union there, which is the biggest one in the world. The president was Yemeni. The vice president was Yemeni, the treasurer was Yemeni, and the secretary was Yemeni. And uh, this was not an aberration. So um, uh, they are probably in the audience more than just the ambassador here. 
In fact, we have one working with us, and we're delighted to, to have her, uh, Asma Hatal. Um, I'll stop this and, and in introduce the ambassador rather than the country and its people and its culture. Uh, uh, the ambassador, whose biographical details are in your book, uh, uh, did his uh, business administration at uh, Baghdad uh, University, and he became the director of uh, the business administration unit in Sana'a University, Center, uh, Yemen's highest uh, institution of uh, institu most prominent institution of higher education. Uh, but most important to fast forward to Yemen's conflict, its civil war, its struggle to reconfigure its, its structure of governance and system of political dynamics. Uh, this individual was tasked with something I think that would elude most of us in terms of our abilities. Think in terms of a constitutional convention, in American terms, Philadelphia in the 1780s. More than 565 Yemenis of every political faction, not imaginable, but in reality, in existence, uh, were organized largely under his leadership. He was the Secretary uh, General of it, and working with the Regions Standing Committee, uh, because most people have at least arrived to a consensus that Yemen's structure of governance and geographical representation will be reconfigured. That's no small thing. The state of Virginia, where I'm from, used to go all the way to the Ohio River. And uh, out of it were called Tennessee, West Virginia, Kentucky, uh, other areas there. And over the dead body of a lot of people who didn't want that to happen with political vested interest and people who were inclined to be aggressive and others inclined to be resistant. Uh, this individual was, was charged with that more than any other Yemeni. So this is not a Johnny or Jacqueline come lately. Uh, this is not a newcomer. Uh, this is an individual who's been entrusted with probably the single most important task of his country's near-term prospects. Um, he's also the former chief of staff of the last legitimately elected president of Yemen. Please join me in welcoming the ambassador of Yemen, Ambassador Mubarak. Thank you very much, Dr. Linton. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Your Highnesses, Excellencies, distinguished guests, I'm grateful to be here with you again at the National Council on U.S.-Arab Relations in my capacity as Yemen's ambassador to the United States. And it is a pleasure to be marking with you this time the 25th anniversary. I would like to begin by congratulating the Council on reaching this milestone and by conveying how instrumental a role that the Council has served to improving American understanding of the Arab world. Indeed, you have expanded strategic, economic, political, commercial, and cooperation ties. And my government wishes you further success with all your efforts. I wish also to thank the amazing team at the Council, and especially Dr. Antony, for the continued and committed support to Yemen, and for affording me this opportunity to speak before of you today. Ladies and gentlemen, Yemen is suffering from all sorts of serious problems, all of which has been caused by the irresponsible actions of Houthi rebels allied with the for forces of former President Saleh. As the assembly here is aware, Yemen is still, Yemen is still in the grips of the protracted conflict which has killed thousands of civilians, and it has f further displaced over three million people. 
profoundly damaging the livelihood of so many, whom before were already facing a difficult humanitarian dilemma, but which has now been facing more and more difficulties. Let us remember that the first line in the Houthis' main slogan affirms death to America. But the Houthis have already killed and terrorized the people of Yemen with assassination, abduction, and bombing. By myself, I was a victim of you know, uh, uh, abduction. I have been abducted for more than two weeks by Houthis. The withholding of food, medical supplies, and salaries, and also used children as soldiers in their military activities, which itself is a reprehensible atrocity. However, notwithstanding this unfortunate crisis, my government, the legitimate and internationally recognized government of President Hadi, has made important steps covering political, economic, security, and military dimension. My government has succeeded in recapturing areas once controlled by Houthi Saleh forces. Now we are controlling over 80% of the country territory. There has been significant decrease in the terrorist-related incidents after liberating the city of Al-Mukalla from the grasp of Al-Qaeda. Yemen's prime minister and the whole cabinet have been back in Yemen for an extended period. Now they are conducting the government work from Aden, the temporary capital. The government has t taken the courageous uh, and serious step to relocate the Central Bank of Yemen to Aden from the Houthi Saleh controlled Sana'a. This maneuver was forced by the legitimate government after discovering that substantial amount of bank's resources were being used by used and squandered in support of their military uh, uh, efforts. Additionally, the government has taken this uh, uh, action to address the serious concerns raised by the international donors that the funds of the Central Bank of Yemen were also being channeled to unlawful Houthi affiliated beneficiaries. My government has succeeded in re-initiating oil production such as in Petro Masila facility and very soon in Marib. However, the aforementioned is just a start in a long journey to recovery with much more needed to be done and achieved. And my government commitment to the people of Yemen is firm and unwavering. And we will continue our, uh, our steady efforts to remedy the huge challenges facing our country to elevate the humanitarian severing and to improve overall econ uh, the economical uh, condition as fast as possible, while seeking to achieve a final and sustainable peace. Indeed, Yemen conflict destabilizing the region, especially due to its strategic location next to Bab al-Mandab which is one of the most active and strategic shipping lanes in the world. Just recently, U.S. naval ships patrolling within international uh, uh, waters off the coast of Yemen were attacked by the Houthi rebels, which reflects the Houthi reckless military behavior, raising this, the specter of engendering a wider regional conflict. What happened against the U.S. Mason this month should be deemed as a terrorist attack similar to the U.S. call in 2000. Nevertheless, my government stands ready for willing to reach a sustainable peace agreement. Moreover, the world no longer allow for Iran's support for the Houthis to further handle reaching a lasting political settlement. Iran's rules has been harmful to the Yemeni society, attempting to foment sectarianism and religious tension. That period to the Houthi Saleh coup didn't exist beforehand in Yemen. The government of Yemen stands firm in resolving the crisis through political means, and no 
uh, and, in, uh, and has on many occasions called all the factions for a sincere dialogue that aims to definitely resolve the current political crisis. Additionally, President Hadi has repeatedly asked all factions to adhere to the Security Council Resolution 2216 and to the GCC initiatives and the outcomes of the National Dialogue Conference. Only the implementation of the later three references and nothing else can effectively and justly clearance Yemen out of the conflict. However, guarantees need to be taken in consideration. This is an important point that our international partners need to recognize. Yemeni government cannot afford to disappoint its people again and again with more elusive peace agreement as we had many times before. We need sustainable peace, and this will entail the end of militias as we know it, the complete withdrawal from the main cities, and the full surrender, surrenders of arms seized belong to the state. Moreover, moreover, if no sustainable peace agreement in Yemen is reached, then the world is setting a dangerous precedence in the region by condon condoning a militias take over by force against an elected government. As Yemen strives to achieve its post-conflict reconstruction needs, Yemeni people must once again look to their friends in the United States for support. We look forward to working with the new U.S. administration, the U.S. private sector, the American universities, hospitals, and many other U.S. institutions to address Yemen's critical post-conflict needs. Additionally, the government of Yemen will continue to work with the U.S. in the field of counterterrorism, as it's endangers gravely our nation and the world. Through our united efforts, I believe that we can aid the creation of a new, more inclusive Yemen, one which better fits to an inspiration of its people. Failure to reach a sustainable peace agreement in Yemen will lead to future conflicts. And if Iran has its way, it could even spill over with, the, with wider conflict implications. Finally, I wish to, ensure, to assure that our region requires a strong partnership with the United States in order to face the many demanding challenges. Unfortunately, a law like JASTA undermines that sort of partnership and, in fact, can limit us from having effective results. It is reported that Winston Churchill once said, you can, you can count on the Americans to do the right things, but only after exhausting all other possibilities. Therefore, I believe that even Churchill will agree that the all alternatives have not been exhausted. And indeed, another recourse should be explored. In closing, I wish to repeat my appreciation to the organizer of this conference as we, as we continue working together to address the region crucial needs. I hope to see you again next year with significantly better news regarding Yemen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you.